Hey, and welcome back to Slick Willy Fly. What we're going to do today is we're going to tie a bait fish that my buddies can throw when they're offshore in South Florida. And they, uh, you know, have a boat surrounded by mahi or tunas or whatever. So we're going to make a, a little bit larger size uh, bait fish. So what I have in the, in the vise right now is a 4-0 stainless steel hook because it is intended for salt water. And I'm going to go ahead and start my thread. This is 100 denier white thread. I'm using white because I don't know what color I'm going to make the head. I'm probably going to use red eyes, but we'll see. So this is going to be a um, craft fur reverse tie. I'm going to go ahead and do this very similar to some of my undertaker flies that you've seen in the past. Um, not a whole lot of difference. What I'm going to do is three colors. I'm going to start with a little bit of cream craft fur in the tail. And I want this fly, actually I'm not going to start with craft fur, I take that back. I'm going to start with a little bit of UV flash for the tail. So I'm going to start with this yellow. And the reason that um, this UV, I want to start with this UV flash is because it gives me a little bit of um, structure when I make this fly. I don't need a lot. I'm going to take about that much because I'm going to fold it in half. So I really don't need a lot. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to make sure the ends are a little bit staggered. And then I'm going to Stagger some more. And then I'm going to imagine my length. My length, probably, if I say two hook shanks, so it's one, two, two and a half hook shanks. We'll say, probably good enough. And then I'm going to do two wraps. Three wraps, check the length. I like the length. I like where it's sitting. If I was to fold this in half right now, it looks about right. So I'm gonna pull that tight. Make sure that that's locked in nice and hard. Go ahead and fold it over. And make sure I lock that in nice and hard. Now what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to take a little bit of zap. I'm going to put zap on my thread on the hook because I don't want my thread to move. But I'm also going to put a little bit of zap on the base of this tail. Because I want this um, tail to stay kind of a tail. So when it's in the water, it doesn't flail all over the place. The ends will still flutter nice, but in the body itself, it's going to stay kind of a tail. Okay. So we're going to give that a second to dry. And uh, we'll be right back. And we'll start to fly. Alright, so welcome back. So what I've decided to do. I'm torn. I have these grizzly feathers. And I, I'm torn as to whether I'm going to use them in the tail or use them a little bit later in the, on the bait fish itself. I think I'm going to make a little bit of a craft fur body and then use the grizzly feathers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a little bit of craft fur. And I'm using the full length of this craft fur. This particular craft fur is cream colored. And I'm going to go ahead and put it more on the bottom. It doesn't really matter, but we're going to do that. Um, it's not quite as long as some of the other craft fur that I've bought in my life. I was a little disappointed with the length of this one, actually. But we're still going to use it. And... Um, Gonna make sure I distribute around the hook here. So we have it on both sides of the hook nicely. 
And we're going to lock that in. Now I'm going to take another little clump of uh, cream color. I have these pre-prepped to try and save a little bit of time. And we're going to go ahead and put it on the top side. We're going to make sure that we distribute nicely around the hook like we have and lock that in nicely. Now we can trim away all this excess that's sitting on the hook. What I always do, you've seen me do this in the past, is I take it, I give it a little twist, and I take it away. By giving it that little twist, it makes it a little bit easier for me to take away just the part that I want to take away. Clean up some of this. Not really necessary, because this fly is going to, we're going to build some body here. All right, so now I'm going to take uh, another piece of my cream and I'm going to come again on the bottom and again we're going to do two wraps one two distribute along the bottom a little pull that tight and lock it in whoops got to be careful with that and then I use my needle, my bodkin, to make sure that I'm on both sides of the hook here, which we are. Nice. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of gray. Because I like using different shades, different colors. Actually, you know what, before I do the gray, maybe I do a little bit more flash. I think I'm gonna do a little bit of gold flash. I'm gonna also use uh, Mirage Opal, because you guys know how much I love Mirage Opal. And, um, but that I'll use a little bit later in this fly. So if I have, I got here, three strands of, of Flashaboo, and three is plenty. So I am going to go ahead and place these on the side at about the halfway mark. And yeah, I, I realize they're a little bit longer than the craft fur, but that's okay, because I have a good amount of flash that's longer than the craft fur right now. I'm going to take the remaining to the opposite side, just get them locked in, and now I could place them where I want them, just like that. And they are a little bit longer than I would want, so I'm just going to trim them, just like that. Nice. So now I am going to come with a clump of gray on the top. Just like that. Two turns. Just to make sure that we place it where we want it. I think that's a little bit too far back, actually. So place it a little bit farther forward. I don't want to cover that much of the cream. That's better, I think. Two turns. I think I like where that is now. Pull it tight and lock it in. And cut off my tag. So now I'm going to come in with one more clump of cream on the bottom. A couple 
couple of turns. I like that. Pull it tight and lock it in and cut off the tag. So now I have a decision to make. I can come in with my Mirage Opal like I normally do, or I could do something a little different. I can come in with a little bit of Ripple Ice, give it a little bit more color, a little bit more something under the body here. I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna use this red Ripple Ice. I really like this feather. This, this fiber is great because they come out of the pack pretty straight. So I just grab a little clump and I'm just going to take this at about, I don't know, the midpoint. And I'm gonna give it a couple of wraps. I want it to sit more on top than on bottom. Pull that tight, fold that over, and pull that tight, just like that. That looks pretty cool. Got some good color there. That will definitely shine through. Nice. So now, some of these wild ones will trim up as I'm going. So now what I think I'm gonna do, is I think I'm gonna attach my feather, my grizzly feather. And then after the grizzly feather, we'll put in the, um, the reverse tie. So I'm going to do my side first and I want the grizzly feather to be a little bit longer than the than the craft fur if not at, at least as long as the craft fur. So that looks about right. A couple of turns. Put it right where I want it on the side of this fly. And lock that tight. like to fold over the tag end so I can cut it nice and close. And now we do the same on the opposite side. You've heard me say this in the past that I like to tie these in a little bit long because after I give it those two wraps it's a lot easier for me to pull the feather to the correct length just like that. Wrap it up nice and tight. Fold it over. Cut that. So now, got my feathers in. Everything's where it needs to be. So now we do the reverse tie. So now I'm going to come with a clump of gray for the bottom. And I don't have to worry about the, the length of this because the fly is so long that I can't, it won't be any issue using the full clump of craft fur. So I'm going to use the full clump of craft fur. Let me give this a couple of ties, just like that. You know, the reason I have no lead or no, um, weight of any kind on this fly is I'm having visions of I don't, I don't know how many of you guys have had the, the good fortune to be able to fish offshore but like for instance mahi it's not unusual when you hook one that the boat gets surrounded by mahi so I'm just having visions of my buddies in South Florida 
with a boatload of mahi around just super hungry chewing really really hardcore aggressive and them casting out this fly so i don't want the fly to, to sink dramatically as long as the fly is wet it will sink it will suspend i guess might be the better way to phrase it so now i'm going to use a piece of black craft fur right on the top about the same length as my bottom couple of turns make sure the length is good make sure it's sitting right on top and crank that tight this is when that hundred denier is nice you can really crank down hard Take that away and wrap this all up Now I need to think about how far forward do I want to bring the thread because normally you heard me say on a reverse tie I, I bring it to all the way to the bead or all the way to the front of the of the fly. There really isn't a front of the fly but I do have the eye of the hook. So what I'm doing is I'm getting it fairly close to the eye of the hook, not all the way. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the reverse tie from there. Because it'll give me a nice solid base for making the head. So now I'm going to get my homemade push tool. Divide up this, make sure that I get my black on top and my gray on the bottom. make the wall in front of the craft fur. Now a lot of times you see me go onto the craft fur. A little torn, but actually I'm going to. I'm going to because it makes it easier to build the head. But I'm thinking I might want, I might just want to use a marker. Maybe I make this thread red or black or it's a shame we don't have a live feed and I can ask you guys what you think it's a pretty cool little trick also I have this little hair clip that like you would buy for like little girls and it's perfect for holding your materials while you decide what you want to do with them or while you take the scissor and trim a little bit of wild hairs that aren't going to look so good but you do have to be careful you don't cut up your craft fur I think I'm going to go black. A little more. Put a whip finish on this.
Okay. So, like so many of my other flies, this fly right now, I think would fish pretty good. Don't really have to do too much more to this fly and it would definitely catch fish. I'm probably going to come in with a scissor and stagger these guys up a little more. When I do that, I come from the bottom. So that way I know that I'm not going to cut anything the same length. It gets really random when I do it that way. I like that better already. Maybe do a little more. And um, this fly right here, this is going to look so good in the water. The red will show, the, the UV will show, the gold flash will show. I think that that feather is going to make it look really fishy. And it's a light enough fly that this is going to cast super easy. And this is going to get massacred. And I will be right back. Because I'm not going to take the time in this video to make a head. I have another video, which I'll post a link, where I show you how I make a head. But I will be right back with how this fly looks with the head. Because I think it's going to look a lot better with the head. But uh... Alright, so welcome back. So here's the um, finished fly. I decided to go with yellow eyes instead of um, red. The eyes are 6mm um, eyes. Again, this is a 4-0 hook. Uh, I'm going to put the link on how I make a head. You can see it's a nice head. It's shaped nicely. It'll swim good. Um, this should sink slowly. And my idea is for when the boat is surrounded by fish, that we can have some fun casting this offshore. Uh, it's a big fly. I'm going to say that this is at least 6 inches long. I'm thinking 8 weight and above. Probably something more like a 10 weight and um, hang on tight because this thing is going to get massacred. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.